quick word on natural history of Ascolidus Downer syndrome. Uh, the early childhood is uh, mainly non-symptomatic. Uh, the main clinical uh, complications that may occur are, are bruises, easy bruising, that may uh, even lead to the suspicion of child abuse. Uh, organ complications are rare, uh, mainly triggered by uh, s uh, medical or surgical intervention uh, in an undiagnosed child. Uh, constipation may be severe. Uh, floppy infant syndrome has been reported in, or has been documented in patients with vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. You can see here already in this uh, five-year-old boy uh, acrogeria, uh, acrogeria starting, um, and here an evocative uh, face, uh, facial appearance. And during the childhood, the children will uh, typically remain non-symptomatic and, and at the end of the teenage years, uh, complications will start to occur, uh, meaning arterial accidents, digestive uh, complications, meaning bowel perforation, and other uh, uh, organ uh, complications as pneumothorax, notably in young males, uh, organ rupture eventually, and early varicose veins that uh, may compete uh, with uh, the, the diagnosis of the disease itself. And it is not seldom that patients are being referred uh, for complicated venous surgery uh, with a suspicion of vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome after a severe uh, complication occurred as venous, uh, femoral, venous femoral rupture or even femoral artery rupture. Uh, here is a, 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 a very classic illustration of, of the age of onset of uh, the first major complication. Uh, this curve has been published for the first time by uh, Melanie Pepin and Peter Byers. And uh, this is uh, a reproduction of this curve uh, with a European um, population of patients. And it's quite similar, only that uh, one difference between these two curves is that the onset of uh, um, the complications we have described is a little bit later than in uh, the uh, population of Melanie Pepin, uh, by five years approximately. Uh, this figure also shows that by the age of 60, almost 100% will of patients will have had at least one complication due to Ehlers, the vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome that shows the severity uh, of this condition. Uh, the distribution of the first complication uh, is, uh, of course, arterial uh, with 63% uh, and one quarter of complications would be digestive. Um, and the other ones would be the obstetrical ones, but this is a specific situation, and the others would be organ rupture and pneumothorax. Interestingly, if you uh, look at the second complication according to the first one, uh, you notice that uh, patients that have had an, an arterial accident as a first complication will more likely do a second complication that is also an arterial accident. Uh, even more interestingly, that patients that will have done a first digestive accident, the second complication will be uh, more likely a digestive complication. What are the types and the frequency uh, of arterial complications? Well, the, the most common uh, ones are, the, are dissections with 76%, uh, followed by uh, the carotid, carotidocavernous fistula, 8%, arterial rupture, uh, just quite rare, luckily, uh, aneurysms and also false aneurysms, uh, which are mostly complications of a medical intervention or interventional radiology. The digestive events uh, are quite frequent in patients with vascular EDS and uh, occur in 41% of all patients. Uh, the most common digestive complication is colon rupture, and uh, would be the sigmoid colon. And this occurs in 27% of patients, which is a little bit higher than previously described. Uh, colonic perforation is associated with important morbidity, and most importantly, it will result in more than one cases in two in reperforation. And that means another surgery and, and, and even more morbidity. The reperforations happen more frequently in young males, 
and uh, in patients with splicite variants. No, uh, interestingly, uh, patients with haploid insufficiency uh, do, not, uh, are, are, do not have uh, bowel perforations, or none have been reported to date. So, uh, what are the outcomes of vasculeus Danish syndrome? Uh, well, the primary cause of death is, of course, arterial rupture, and the uh, uh, secondary cause would be organ rupture, like spleen rupture, eventually liver rupture, uh, followed by the gastrointestinal uh, complications. Uh, arterial complications or organ complications will repeat throughout the adult life and will result in premature death. Notably, there uh, is a greater risk of death for young, ma young males that has been uh, uh, already been uh, n noticed by Barabbas in 2000 with uh, higher mortality of young males and documented by Peter Byers and Melody Pepin. Uh, with an uh, increased mortality uh, in the teenage years and in the early adult years in comparison to women. This would result in a median life expectancy in the United States of 51 years, uh, dividing into 46 for ma males and 54 years for women. Other pro prognostic factors of vascular EDS, uh, of course, are uh, the types of mutation with the best prognosis uh, being uh, the ones of, uh, of patients with haploid insufficiency, uh, and worse prognosis in comparison to glycine substitutions for patients with splicite variants. There is important intrafamilial variability uh, that has not been clearly explained yet.